What's up, friends? My name is Dan Vega, and I am a Spring Developer Advocate for VMware. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about Spring Beans. What are they? Why, do, why should we care about them as Spring Developers? And what are the annotations that support them? What, do you, what happens when you see at Bean or at Component? What do these annotations do? Now, this came up because I recently created a Spring Boot crash course that was four hours long, yes, four hours long. This is a really great place to get started, but again, it is a little bit longer, so I just wanted to cover the topic of Spring Beans in this video. If you want to get access to that free resource, it's on YouTube, I'll go ahead and leave a link up here, and I will go ahead and leave a link in the description below. I also have a blog post for the material that we're gonna walk through today, so if you wanna go ahead and check that out, that will be in the description below as well. So what is the agenda? Okay, we need to cover a few things. What is a spring bean? Uh, that term, along with some other terms, may come up and you may get confused by them. I know I was at the beginning, uh, but don't worry. They're just fancy terms for fundamental concepts in spring. So we'll talk about spring beans. Then we'll create a new project. We'll cover what not to do first. It, maybe this is something you're already doing in your code. We'll cover why you shouldn't be doing that. And then we'll talk about how to create beans in our own applications using annotations like at bean and at component. So what are we waiting for? Let's start with what is a spring bean? All right, so I created this simple graphic to walk through what is a spring bean. Did anyone else get confused the first time they heard this term? I, there are a bunch of terms, and it's this is not a spring specific thing. You'll find this in any language or framework, but I've heard spring beans, application context, uh, IOC container, uh, there's a whole bunch of terms that get thrown around and sometimes you're like, what is that? I'm a little bit confused by that. Don't worry, you're not alone. I was there too, still am at some sometimes. Um, so the question is, have you ever created an instance of a class? I think we can all raise our hands there. At some point, if you've done some Java, you've created an instance of a class, right? If so, you've created a Spring Bean, congratulations. Uh, so if you have, a Spring Bean is just an object that's managed by the Spring IOC container along with some metadata. Now the IOC container, the application context, just this big pool of objects that, that the Spring runtime can go ahead and say, okay, I need that object, let me get, a, get the instance of it that was already created. So it's just an object of your class that you have created in code, right? But there's just some metadata on top of it. Things like, what is the class name? Uh, what is the class that we're using? What is the scope? So there are, there are different scopes of Bean. By default, they're singleton. Uh, hey, we have some constructor arguments, right? What are the properties here? Is there an initialization method? I want to do something uh, when the bean is created. Or a destruction method. Hey, I want to do something when the bean is uh, de destroyed, right? There is more metadata that is attached to a spring bean, but these are the highlights, if you will. So I hope that kind of breaks down what is a spring bean, why should we care about it. Now what I want to do is go in, create an application, and we'll talk about what not to do, and then we'll, we'll, we'll examine spring beans and then how we can create them ourselves. So let's head over to uh, our favorite website, the Spring Initializer at start.spring.io. We're going to create a Maven project today using Spring Boot. I'm going to set the group to dev.danvega, and we'll call this one Beans. I'm going to leave it at Java 17. The only dependency that we need today is Spring Web. With that, we can go ahead and generate our application that will download a zip file. You can open this up in whatever IDE you're most productive in. For me, that's IntelliJ, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open it and I will see you in IntelliJ. Let's go. All right, so here I am in the application. I'm gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna create a couple of classes so that we can talk about beans. So I'm gonna create a new Java class. Let's create it in a service package and we'll call this post service. Let's say in the post service that we had a method. Uh, let's go ahead and just say that it returns a string and let's say it was called find all. We'll just say return all posts. Now in a real world, this would be a little bit more complicated. We'd be turning like a collection of posts, but let's just keep it simple for today. So we have a post service with a find all method. Now I'm going to create another class. Let's go ahead and create a class in a controller package. 
we'll call this post controller. So in a post controller, this might be something like a rest controller with a request mapping of slash API slash posts. And in here, we might have a get mapping to get all of the posts. So I would say public string find all similar to our service. And then I would return something here. So let's go ahead and we are going to need our post service. So I might create something like private uh, post service. We'll call this post service. And then I might create a constructor to, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. They make it very easy to do the right thing. In this case, I don't want to do that. So here what I might do is I might say this dot post service is equal to new post service. So now that I have an instance of that post service, I could say post service dot find all and that will return to me all of my posts. Now there is something very wrong with this. Now remember I said let's go ahead and talk about what not to do. This is a simple use case. Uh, it is not best practice and it does not scale well. A big issue that you're going to run into here is when you try to write tests against your controller. Uh, if you want to isolate the controller, you need to create a new instance of the post controller. You're always creating a new instance of the post service. Uh, so I have some dedicated videos to uh, why constructor injection is the preferred method and what dependency injection is in and in, in how it relates to Spring and we'll kind of cover a lot of those nuances there. So I'm not going to cover those here. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go ahead and check that out. Um, but we do not want to do this. Anytime you kind of see the new keyword, this should raise some alarms in your head like woo do 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 something is wrong here, Dan. Why are we doing this? So again, this is because we are creating a new instance of a class. We don't want to create instances of classes. We want Spring to manage this for us. That's what IOC is, inversion of control. We don't want to be the one controlling instances of classes. We want Spring to do this for us. So the question is, if we don't do this, how do we get an instance of our post service in here? First off, we need to make post service available. Like right now, this is just a class. We don't have an instance of it in the application context. Dan, what is the application context? What the heck are you talking about? So there are a couple ways that you can do this. You can write some code here to find out all of the beans in your application. You could actually use the uh, actuator to list out all the beans in the application. I'm going to show you a simple one here in IntelliJ. If I go ahead and run this application, there is a little helpful tool here. So where is that? Let's say spring and when spring is in there. All right, and as we do that, we get uh, the beans in our application. So we have our beans application and our post controller. We'll talk about why that is in a second. But you notice that we don't have our post service. Our post service is not showing up as a bean in our application. So how can we correct that? So we can come into post service and we can use an annotation. So we said at the beginning, there are two annotations that we want to talk about here, at component and at bean. At component is the first one. If we look at at component, you can see by the documentation here that it says, this indicates that an annotated class is a component. Such classes are considered as candidates for auto detection when using annotation based configuration and class path scanning. So that's a whole long way to saying that if you annotate the class with add component, it's going to get picked up and put in the application context. Let's go ahead and rerun this and then take a look at our application in our spring here. And now we see that we have a post service. So now that bean, that class, again, a, a bean is just a class. That class has some metadata attached to it. It's now in the container. Spring is managing that for us. So that means that now in our controller, we can come in here and we can say that this is going to be final. We can add this as a constructor parameter. And because this is a constructor parameter now, 
when spring creates an instance of this post controller, it sees that that's a constructor argument. Remember, that's one of the metadata th properties that it's looking at. And it will auto wire this in for us because it has an instance of it. Now, if we were to take this off of here and go back to our post controller, it's going to say, hey, you're asking for a post controller, post service. I can't auto wire one of those in. I don't know what post service is. So that's why when we annotate this with the add component, uh, it knows what that is and it can auto wire this in for you. Now you may see code or older code that has the at auto wired annotation on it saying, hey, Spring, auto wire these arguments in for me. If there is only a single constructor, this is implicit, so you don't need to add it, but that is what's happening underneath the hood. So there is our at component. Now there are specialized versions of at component. Um, if we go ahead and use something like at service, because this is an at service class, if we dig into there, you can see that at service itself is annotated with at component. So at the end of the day, there are specialized components uh, like service, repository, controller, rest controller, et cetera. And that brings us back to the um, post controller, which itself is annotated with rest controller. If we dig into rest controller, that is annotated with that controller, and that is annotated with add component, and that is why the post controller got picked up and put into the application context. All right, so I'm not sure if you picked up on it, but at using those different annotations like at component, at service, at rest controller, if you notice, those were all at the class level. That's great. This is all code that we are writing. We are writing these classes. We want to create an instance of it. We can add an annotation to that class. What happens if you need to create a bean from a method call? Maybe you don't have control over the class. Uh, maybe you are implementing an interface using a Lambda. That is something you do often. Um, what happens in that case? Uh, when applied to, that, that is really where the bean annotation uh, is used to declare a bean in Spring. When applied to a method, this annotation specifies that the method returns a bean and should be managed by the Spring container. Uh, methods with at bean are usually declared within an at configuration class. So let's go ahead and take a look at that example. All right, let's say that we are here in our post service and we need to call out to an external service. Let's say we have a git mapping for a function that we are going to load all our posts from some external service. So we have this git mapping called load. We have a string uh, load posts. And all we're going to do is return load posts. All right. What we want to do is we want to use something like a REST template to call out to a third party service. Now, REST template, um, we could create an instance here in our class, but this is probably something that we'll use throughout our application. So we may just want one instance of it. So let's go up here and we're going to create a new uh, Java class. We'll put it in a package called config and we'll call this the uh, web config. So again, as I said before, every uh, when we're looking for beans uh, using the at bean annotation, you'll usually find them in an at configuration class. So let's mark this with at configuration. And now we can use the at bean annotation. And what we're saying here is whatever return from this um, method that we write, that we want put into the application context. So let's say that we are going to return a REST template. We'll call this REST template. And inside of here, we'll return a new REST template REST template builder dot build, and that is our instance of our REST template. Now, because this is in a configuration class and marked with at bean, this is going to be picked up for us. So let's go ahead and rerun our application. And now if we look in here, that web config is a class that is 
marked with that configuration, which underneath the hood uses that component. But we also see we have an instance of REST template. So now back in our post controller, if we wanted to, we could say private final, uh, REST template, REST template. We'll add that to as a constructor parameter. And as you can see, that gets wired in for us by spring. And then we can use that REST template to call out to some other service there. So cool, that's one example. Another example that you might come across is you might see this, and I do this a lot in my applications, is I will create a bean right here in my main application class. Why does this work? Because the at Spring Boot annota application annotation is itself annotated with a bunch of annotations. So if we look in here, we see um, component scan, we see uh, auto configuration, Spring Boot configuration, uh, which is annotated with at configuration. So that means this main application class can be scanned bean definitions. So one thing I often do is create a command line runner. So a command line runner, we'll look at this in a second, returns args. And if we look at a command line runner, this is a functional interface. This means that it is a candidate for a Lambda expression. You can see it has a single abstract method in here called run. It takes a var args of args and that we can use to bootstrap some data in our application because this starts or this will run after the application starts and after the application context has been created. So we could do some things in here. We can say, um, hello, and let's go ahead and use an emoji just for fun. And now if we go ahead and run our application and look at the output here, we can see that that was outputted. And again, this works because we use the at bean annotation here. If we go ahead and remove that, you will see that nothing happens in here. But if we go ahead and put that back and rerun this and head over to our handy little dashboard here, you'll see that we have a command line runner. So an instance of the command line runner was created. I hope this tutorial cleared some things up on what spring beans are and how uh, we can use at component and at bean to create instances of our classes and put them in the application context. As I said throughout this tutorial, sometimes we hear terms like spring beans and application context and they can be a little bit intimidating, but once we understand what they are, uh, it's not really a big deal. So I'll leave some resources in the description below. Again, I have a Spring Boot crash course that's almost four hours long. We cover that and a whole lot more. And I'll leave some uh, links to a article that I wrote on my blog that includes a lot of this. So if you want to scan through and, and copy and paste some code, you can, as well as the GitHub repo for all of this that we went through today. So friends, if you found value in this, do me a huge favor. Those thumbs up really help me out. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Leave me some feedback below. Let me know if these types of tutorials are helping you. And as always, happy coding, friends. Yeah.